Are you looking to become a tier one operator in the gaming world? Elevate your games with Black Sight Studio Terrain. First things we did, again, as per the uh, turn sequence with prep segment, is we applied speed changes. So the Americans stuck with their 16, because again, they don't want to close with these Soviets too fast. MiG number one kept his 20. MiG number two, oh, I should say number two, sorry everybody. Uh, MiG uh, Fulcrum number two has increased his speed to 23. My oh my, I wonder why he could have possibly done that. Is it because he's also going to place maneuver cards? Is he also going to declare a maneuver? Uh, that even if it succeeds, it is going to um, slow down his plane a little bit. The answer here is yes. So, um, once all that was set up and out of the way, I then rolled initiative. Um, ironically, it came out in almost the it did come out in the exact same order. We've got MiG number two being forced to go first, then the Americans go, uh, and then MiG uh, number one is going to go after that. So we notice that MiG number one is not taking a maneuver tile. Uh, MiG number one is keeping his speed the same. And we don't, you know, gee, wonder, wonder why he's going to do that. Well, here's what's going to happen. MiG-29, number two, has two missiles coming right at him. They are going to hit this turn. If he gets hit with one of them, he's pretty much toast. Okay, so that's why he picked the break turn. So he's going to dodge. That means he will not get a chance to fire, at least not with missiles, but he's not worried about that right now. He's worried about the American missiles coming right at his canopy. So we're going to make a roll and see if he succeeds with that break turn. Whether or not he succeeds or fails, he's going to lose some speed. So that's the reason why in the speed segment he planned ahead and he said, uh-oh, I'm going to get hit by missiles, I want to do a break turn. He dumps fuel into his afterburner. That's why he's now moving at 23. Now, what else is going on? Then the Americans are going to go. So if this guy breaks and he turns away from the missile, say he ends up down here somewhere. He says, oh no, there are two missiles coming right at my canopy. I'm going to break, assuming those missiles don't hit him. And he's going to, you know, curve down here in a very tight turn. Well, the Americans are, it's like meat on the table. They're just going to turn in right behind him and uh, get right on the six. Well, that's okay because the MiG number one is MiG number two's wingman. There's another MiG in the air and he's going to be able to cover for his guy and get in behind the Americans if they do that. So the two MiGs, even though nobody's moved yet, they're already thinking ahead and they're already covering for each other. Alrighty, let's see what happens here uh, with this turn sequence. So the first thing that's going to happen, again, MiG-29, number two, has to go first. He rolled the poorest initiative. First thing he's going to try is a break turn. So, we have to roll a dice and see how that goes for him. Um, a break turn normally has a 6 plus on a D10 in order to succeed or fail. Um, so MiG-29 is a high-powered aircraft. He gets to roll that against a 5 plus, not a 6 plus. Also, one thing that I do when I play Air War C-21, this just makes the whole system, at least for me, run a little bit smoother. I just give everybody good pilots. There are five levels of pilots in the game. Green, poor, normal, uh, good, and ace. Um, I just I just give everybody good pilots. That gives everybody a plus one. It just seems to help, you know, it's like a little bit of uh, WD-40 in the gears. It just makes everything just run just a little bit smoother. So that five plus becomes a four plus. Um, Mr. MiG-29 has to roll a 4 plus to succeed on his break turn, so let's see what happens. Alright, Mr. MiG-21, let's see what happens here. 4 plus, red dice, here we go. Uh, he rolls a 9, he is successful on his break turn, so that's going to be good news for him. So, his speed, at, well at the beginning of his, of his break turn, his speed was 24, so we're going to use that. He has to move half of his movement which is 12. Boom, there's 12. He 
he gets to make his turns. Same as always. Because he made a successful break turn, he gets to he gets access to additional uh, segments of this turn wheel. Uh, is probably the fastest way I can I can sort of say that. So normally he's limited to this E for extreme, but now he did an extreme break turn. He can turn a full 90 degrees, and he gets to do this twice. So that was his first 10 inches. Here come his second 10 inches. I'm sorry, 12 inches. He's really close to falling off the edge of the table, so be careful here, Mr. Uh, Mr. Meg. He is going to turn this way. Needless to say, he's really going to hit the brakes. So now that we're on the um, apply speed changes for this guy, he's going to hit the brakes as much as he can. He's going to hit, knock that 21 down to, uh, let's see, he's able to decelerate by four per segment. He's down to 17. So he's going to go ahead and make that turn like he wanted to. He's going to try and screen his engines from any more American gunnery or especially missile fire uh, coming forward. If the Americans do turn down to engage him, he's going to run into problems from MiG number one. The Americans are going to run into problems from his, his, his covering buddy up here at MiG-21. At the same time, the Americans, who now have to move before MiG number one does, kind of know what MiG number one is going to do. Because these two planes can't split up too much. They can't cover each other if they're too far apart. All right, everybody. I've gone ahead and completed the movement for the second movement phase of uh, turn one. So I didn't do anything terribly unpredictable uh, with the movement of the two F-16s and MiG number one. So we already knew where MiG number two ended up. Uh, he's barely in, still in the combat zone. He's about to fly off the edge of the table here. Uh, the two F-16s did do their turn straight toward MiG-29 number one. Now, one thing I forgot to mention before, one of the reasons that those F-16s did not declare any special maneuvers, number one, they didn't really have any reason to, and number two, when they have a semi-active radar homing missile in the air, they are not allowed to do certain maneuvers. Notice I do have, those two F-16s do have the MiG-29 in their gunnery arc. Gunnery arc in this game is pretty narrow, it's only 15 degrees port and starboard but they do have a uh, gunnery arc um, on that MiG-29. However, the range is extreme. The MiG-29 has done a successful evasion maneuver, i.e. that brake turn that we were talking about before, and it's going to be firing from the target front. These are tremendous penalties. Um, so yes, technically the F-16s do have guns on MiG-29 number two, but it's, it's not worth taking. Trust me, this game really limits your ammunition. Uh, MiG-29 number one, meanwhile, has, again, as predicted, uh, sort of swept in behind the Americans as best he could. He couldn't quite do it as hard as he wanted to, but he is now in the frontal arc, his front 60-degree arc, and the enemy's rear 60-degree arc, so he can take advantage of a rule air war C-21 has next uh, turn called tailing, which is uh, pretty much a cheat or a hack for the initiative system. If you're behind an enemy plane within a certain arc, both his rear arc and your front arc, in other words, if you're legit on his six, um, the game allows you to kind of, uh, you know, shortcut through the initiative system until F-16 number two can shake him. And again, that's a whole fighter combat thing that we're going to get into uh, later on in these videos. But the first thing we're going to try and figure out now that we're in the combat phase is we're going to try and figure out whether or not those two missiles um, are actually going to hit MiG-29 number two. So I have the, the, the missile hit modifier table here. Uh, pilot skill modifier gives it a plus one. Again, those are good pilots in the F-16s. Um, negative one for semi-active radar homing missile fired from target front. Uh, missiles, again, deflection is a thing. It's much easier for a missile to hit an enemy plane from behind than it is from the front or especially from the side. The big one here is target did a successful brake turn. So again, like you see in Top Gun, first thing that happens as soon as that threat indicator goes off on your cockpit, you kick that rudder and you do a brake turn. And that is going to give Mr. MiG-29 uh, MiG number two a plus three bonus. And then last but not least, we have um, Target is going to go ahead and fire, fire chaff versus a active radar homing or semi-active radar homing missile. So planes can either carry chaff or flares or both. Not all planes carry either or, um, you know, it depends on the plane. Um, luckily for these MiG-29s and these F-16s, they're both fully loaded with chaff and, uh, and flares. So uh, you can fire one flare per infrared missile that's hitting you this turn, or one chaff per radar-guided missile that's hitting you this turn. 
Obviously, Mr. MiG-29 is cooking off two uh, bundles of chaff in an attempt to, uh, you know, foil this attack. So all that worked out to a, I'm sorry, plus one, negative five equals a net penalty of negative four. All right, so that's not that's not so great because these sparrows only hit on a five plus anyway. So five plus on a D10, plus four difficulty net after we, you know, work in all the benefits and all the all the all, all the penalties and you know we work everything out. We wind up with an adjusted number of nine plus to hit on D10s. Not the greatest, but you never know. So um, the good news for the Americans are is that they have two missiles coming in. So two missiles at uh, nine plus on D10s. Let's see what happens. And we have a one and a five. So both of those missiles have missed for now. Uh, MiG-29 is still it. MiG-29 number two is still in it. And um, again, more bad news. MiG-29 number one is pretty much on the tail of F-16 number one or number two. Probably number two. He's got a better angle of attack on number two. So if we move into uh, round two of this game, he's going to be able to take advantage of the uh, of the tailing rules that we're going to talk about uh, in just a couple of minutes. Alrighty, everybody, here we are at the end of our first fire phase of turn two, and I'm sorry to say that things do not look so hot for Team America here. So, we've done our prep segment and we've done our move segment here at the beginning of turn two, so I'll walk through very quickly what happened. Alright, so, um, the Americans, uh, realizing that, again, like we saw in last turn, uh, MiG number one was right behind both of them and probably going to use the tailing mechanic here in, in the Air War C-21, um, wanted to shake him off that tail. Uh, so they chose Immelman for their special maneuvers. Um, the Soviet MiG number one chose break turn, but again, he was tailing, so he didn't have to do the break turn if he didn't want to. And even if he didn't win initiative, he automatically gets to, quote, win initiative against the plane that is tailing. Meanwhile, the Americans made their two rolls for their Immelmans. F-16 number two succeeded. F-16 number one failed. So both F-16s put three additional points into their speed because um, they knew they were going to pull an Immelman, and I'll explain what that is in a second for those who might not know. Even if he didn't have the tailing rules in his favor, MiG number one, this guy must be some sort of an ace or something from God knows where. He's He's won initiative three times running now. So he was tailing uh, F-16 number two, F-16 number two did an Immelman. He succeeded at that. If MiG number one wanted to continue to tail him, he would have to immediately change um, his special maneuver to uh, from break turn to Immelman, and then he would have to make a roll for that. He decided not to do that because he also saw F-16 number one disastrously fail his Immelman roll. So he said, I'm going to go ahead and switch targets over there to F-16 number one. He does a quick, he executes his pretty planned uh, break turns. Um, he dropped three points in speed doing that because he succeeded in that roll. And you can see where he wound up. And man, it's it's not looking good for F-16 number one. It's not looking very good at all. It's not perfect firing position, because again, even MiG-29 can only turn so hard, but it's pretty damn good. Uh, and he's going to go ahead and uh, and take a gunnery shot at that range with that 30 millimeter cannon that the, I think the MiG-29 has. All right, so that's that's not so good for the Americans. Also. The MiG-29 is going to get a bonus because they have a failed Immelman. Okay, so real quick, Immelman maneuver is a classic fighter maneuver, uh, for those of you who might not know. Invented by a guy named Max Immelman back in World War I, a German uh, fighter pilot named Max Immelman, one of the first great aces. And what it is, is, um, okay, so especially useful if an enemy's on your six, which is why the F-16 picked it. If you have to change direction in a hurry. So you dump a little bit of thrust into your engine, okay, because you're going to want that velocity. You pull back on your stick and you kick your elevators. You stand up on your engine and you pretty much shoot straight for the sky. You go ballistic. You point your engine right at the earth and you go literally straight up like a rocket. Um, while you're doing that, you can corkscrew left or right, depending on how you want to exit your implement turn. Um, that's the magic of the Immelman turn, if it works. When you get to a set altitude, or you know, whatever altitude that you want to do your Immelman to, um, you pull back on your stick again, and now you're pointing pretty much any direction you want. That's what F-16 number two did with a successful Immelman roll. On a successful check, how an Immelman works is you can then go up to half of your speed. You don't have to go half your, half your speed. Anywhere up to, you can go zero, half your speed, and then, in game terms, come out of your Immelman turn pointing any direction you want. You pick it. 
Because again, as you are going into that ballistic phase, you can corkscrew your plane however you want. When you invert and then re-invert so that you're back, you know, with the earth beneath you, you're not pointing in any direction you want. You do lose a little bit of speed on that because again, you were going ballistic for quite a while. Gravity is a thing. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's where he wound up at. Um, that's pretty good. It also gives you a heck of a good uh, defensive fire bonus of anyone shooting a missile at you or guns. That's a successful Immelman. By contrast, here is a failed Immelman. So a failed Immelman means that, in game terms, you have to move. You have to move. Your full half movement. You don't get a choice. And then, rather than pick what direction you go in, you roll that D12 I mentioned earlier. So F16, number two, was able to line up a pretty good maneuver. Again, he, did, he, just, he chose to move almost none of his movement. Um, and then do his Immelman. So he's pretty well lined up on MiG-29 number two. He has now just fired a Sidewinder, which is a much more accurate infrared guided missile. He's managed to fire, it's not quite at the MiG-29 number two's tail, um, but it's not at his front either. So the bonuses there are not going to be quite as bad. Also, those um, Sidewinders are much more accurate missiles um, than, the, than the Sparrows. They don't do as much damage, but they're much more accurate. Right now we've got some bad news uh, for the Americans over here with MiG-29 number one versus F-16 number one in a uh, in a gunnery check. So here's the gunnery check. The MiG-17 carries an automatic 30 millimeter cannon. Um, it's like a single barrel version of what the A-10 carries. Um, so yeah, you start off with seven dice. That's not good. He gets uh, one dice because he's an elite pilot. Or a good pilot, like I said. He gets two dice because he's using a sustained burst. So you can do a short burst, a normal burst, and a sustained burst. And that uses up either one, two, or three units of ammunition. These MiG-29s and these F-16s only carry five units of ammunition. These are automatic cannon, in some cases rotary cannon, that spit out a lot of rounds in an extremely short period of time. Um, what this means in air combat and what this means in Air War C-21 is you get very few shots with guns. Really one and a half. Again, in order to take a good shot with this gun, it requires three out of your ammo points and you only carry five. So he doesn't even get two complete whacks with his gun. Um, he's going to squeeze that trigger, he's going to hold the hammer down, and he's going to wind up burning through 60% of his ammunition in one burst. But when is he going to get a better shot than this? So now is the time. So again, seven is his base, one for being a good pilot. He gets two for using a sustained burst, even though it uses up 60% of his ammunition. And he gets another two uh, bonus because the um, because of the failed Immelman. This plane is pretty much out of control at this point. It's almost stalled and motionless uh, in midair uh, for a crucial heartbeat, which is all May 29 number one is going to need. So. What do I need to roll on my D6s? Well, it's a 3 plus if you're at short range, it's a 5 plus if you're at medium range, and if you're at long range or extreme range, it's a 6 plus. Obviously, I'm at short range, so I get to roll all this at a 3 plus. Every hit is an automatic um, is an automatic level of damage on the F16. F16 number 1. Make peace with your creator and get ready with that ejection handle. You're, I, I, I don't like your chances right now. So here's the roll. And we're looking at one, two, three, four, five. That was not. I just had to put my hand there. Sorry. So we have five points of damage. Kaboom! Right there. All right. So five points of damage. The F-16 only has six. The F-16 is already considered crippled. Um, once you do over half your damage on a, on a plane uh, with you know, damage points, you're considered crippled. All kinds of bad things happen to you when you're crippled. So super fast, just so we can go through the turn sequence as it's uh, as it's actually required here. Here's the additional damage table. We're going to pick up a big red dice and we're going to roll to see what happens here. So 1d10 on the additional damage table. A5. The missile system is KO. No more missiles may be fired. So that F-16 just lost all his missiles. So he's pretty much going to be breaking off. Um, he has no missiles. Uh, his maneuverability class just dropped. His maximum speed just dropped in half. He's no longer an extreme uh, turning plane. He's now only a high maneuverability plane. The best thing he can do is leave, to be perfectly frank. So let's see if the Americans can even the odds in the second half of turn two. Okay, everyone, here we are at the bottom of turn two, and this has been kind of a weird one. I'm not going to lie. Okay, so, um, first thing that happened was, uh, again, uh, Fighting Falcon number one, F-16 number one, was down five out of six damage points 
no missiles left on his plane. Uh, he lost his, com his missile system was completely knocked out. Uh, the pilot was probably badly injured. Um, he was reduced to high maneuverability, not extreme maneuverability. His maximum speed was knocked down from 26 to 13. He, it's a miracle he, he, he isn't already destroyed. Um, and he was already kind of pointing off the map. I don't know if he could have stayed on the map even if he wanted to at his speed and with the turns that he was allowed to make at that point. So he just, you know, decided to save his aircraft and um, evacuate off the southern uh, part of the board there. Uh, MiG-29 number one, however, being in perfect shape, was uh, by no means wanting to break off the action yet. However, again, where he was, he was back in this area and pointing off the board at a relatively high rate of speed. And remember, you have to move half your movement before you make your first turn. The only thing he could have done to stay on the board is either pull an Immelman or a split S and make a successful roll on those. Um, the problem for him is that he failed his roll. And in a failed split S maneuver, you have to move your full half your movement, and then you can point in a random D12 direction. Um, he was already too close. Again, he was moving at 20 at the time. He drops on some speed in anticipation of his split S, but even then, he was moving at, at, uh, at 16, and that's 8 inches that he has to move before he makes his first turn. And that carries him off the board. He um, basically accidentally broke off the action. Uh, you cannot fly off the edge of the map uh, and stay in the game. Meanwhile, uh, we already knew that a missile was heading at MiG number two, so the first thing that you do uh, is you want to pull a maneuver that is going to uh, give you a defensive bonus against an incoming missile. Break turn is one of the best ones for that. Okay, so we have a... Um, again, this is the missile that we launched last turn. This missile technically isn't launched yet, so bear with me for some minute. Um, I just wanted to show why I positioned this F-16 exactly the way I did. Again, he's in my missile arc. If I set that up, and I am definitely not in his front target aspect at this point. I've been firing missiles at the front of Russian planes all day here, and that's why I keep missing. Missiles are, even modern missiles, are uh, they're going to have a much easier time um, hitting the enemy if you fire them from behind. Alrighty. So, anyway, like I said, we're going to see if this missile that I fired last phase is actually going to hit him. If not, I am in really good position to launch it, or not really good, but much better position uh, to sling out my second sidewinder. It better, it's my last sidewinder. These planes only carry two um, at MiG-29 number two um, in this segment. So again, you you resolve the missiles that you fired before, and then you try to fire new missiles if required. So um, this missile is a little bit different than the one we were trying to resolve before. This is a sidewinder, an AIM-9M sidewinder. So it's an infrared guided missile. Um, so the penalties and bonuses are a little bit different. Again, pilot skill is plus one. Negative two for inf infrared missile fired from the target front. That's going to piss me off. And uh, negative two because, yes, he is going to fire off another chaff. Sorry, another flare. In this game, both early F-16s and early MiG-29s carry eight of each. So you're going to run out of missiles before you run out of flares. Um, but that's okay because these missiles start off with really awesome numbers to hit. It's a war of technology. So plus, uh, plus one, negative two, negative two, comes out to a net of negative three. A Sidewinder AIM-M, or a Sidewinder M variant, hits on a two plus on a D-10. It really hits a lot. It's a very, very accurate missile. Um, however, with a plus three uh, penalty, that two plus becomes a five plus. So we're going to see now if that missile hits. Come on, five plus. Mr. Webcam, here we go. We're going to see what happens. Again, I'm not going to cry too much if I miss this roll because there's another Sidewinder ready to go with an even better chance to hit. So, here we go with number... Uh, where am I at here? Where's my dice? Okay, here we go. Come on, 5+. plus, pretty, pretty please. That is a 9. That is a direct hit by uh, Sidewinder number 1 on big 29 number 2. So... He broke and dodged the first missile. He did broke and did not dodge the second missile. A D, I'm sorry, a Sidewinder does a D10 with a worth of damage. We're going to see if that uh, does any good here in just a moment. That is a four. So, four points of damage against, again, the, the six damage points that a MiG-29 um, has. The problem for Mr. MiG-29... Number two is that he's doing 14 points. He's doing 14 speed. So, 
His speed is 26. When he takes up to when he takes over half of his damage points, he's now considered crippled. His maximum speed reduces by half. So his maximum speed is now 13. He's currently doing 14. So you take over speed damage here at the end of the turn sequence, excess speed damage. Okay. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to give him, you take one point of damage for every point that you're over speed. So he was doing 14. His maximum speed dropped from 26 to 13. That renders him now one point over. So he took four points of damage from the missile and one point of damage from over speed equals a total of five points of damage. He's in as bad a shape as uh, the other F-16 is. Okay, now we've also, again, that's two sources of damage. Some from my missile, some from the overspeed. So we're going to roll twice on the additional damage table here. Oops. So for the missile, a three is no additional damage. And from the overspeed, we have a six that is gun system knocked out. Okay, so he's now he's now lost his guns. Ugh. And that's when um, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can fire my second missile at him. Again, I need a three plus to lock on with my second Sidewinder. This guy's maneuverability is pretty terrible. I roll a six. That is a second missile off the rails. My second and admittedly last Sidewinder missile. And it's now coming in at his beam. So that's going to be significant because this IR missile fired from target front, that penalty is not going to apply. So honestly, if I was this Russian player, I would also be breaking off the table. His maximum speed is now... 13. Is he even going to be able to make it off the board without falling apart? No, he's not. Okay, so just to quickly wrap up the video here, um, I'm not even going to worry about maneuver, but just to kind of see if this MiG-29 survives, he, he's going for the edge of the table. The first thing he's going to have to try and do is do another break turn. And if he does another break turn, he at least gets a bonus against that side winder. So, Mr. Webcam here. Obviously, we're doing turn three here pretty shorthand. Okay. Uh, seven. Okay, he does succeed on that break turn. So, you know, we'll say he does this. Oh, get me out of here. Uh, he's doing 12. I'm being very rough here with the movement. But yeah, he's just pretty much just trying to jink his way out of this mess. Um, and then we're going to see if uh, that, that missile is going to actually hit him. So, that missile is now, again, negative one, or I should say plus one for the pilot skill. Pilot, uh, IR missile fired from target beam is negative one. He's going to fire chaff, that's negative two. And he did a successful break turn, that's negative one, two, three. So that's six negatives against one positive, that's plus five. This missile hits on a two, plus five is seven plus, to see if the second American missile hits. What saved him is that successful break turn. A successful break turn might get him back to the motherland. Let's find out. Because if this missile hits him, he literally can't survive. He is, uh, I mean, no matter what the American rolls for damage, he's toast. Seven plus on the second American Sidewinder. That's a six. That missile missed him by the thickness of an extra coat of paint. Dos Vidania, my friend. You deserve an extra cup of vodka when you land back at the airfield. That missile just kind of went... Barely missed you. Okay, and then uh, at the end of next turn, um, that Russian plane is going to escape because uh, he's within 13 inches of the edge of the table now. So no matter where F-16 winds up uh, at the end of his turn, he's not going to get that second shot. Um, he's out of missiles now. He might be able to fire a Sparrow. I doubt he's going to be able to get any kind of guns at him. That second MiG has escaped. So F-16 number two goes home with no kills. We have one very, very badly damaged F-16. We have one extremely badly damaged F, uh, I'm sorry, MiG-29 at the end of the game. And then we have one MiG-29 number, uh, one MiG-29 that accidentally, you know, flew off the grid, flew out of the kill box, so to speak. The air traffic controller is having wars with him right now. And uh, again, this was just a scrimmage game, so we didn't make up like formal scenario rules. As far as collateral goes, it's kind of a draw. Both sides have a barely flying fighter with five points out of six. Um, however, in operational terms, the Americans kind of have air dominance over this area because we have the only plane left um, right now. 
So at least for these couple of minutes, with the cover of one F-16 that survives, what that's going to mean is there's going to be some Apaches, there's going to be some Cobras, there's going to be some A-10s heading over these Russian tank columns driving towards Nuremberg um, here in the Folda Gap. So uh, it, it wasn't the prettiest victory. I, again, it depends on the scenario conditions, whether or not you even want to call it a victory. But um, yeah, believe it or not, the Americans do have the only operational plane over this kill box at the moment. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thanks, everyone, for your support on SITREP Podcast Channel, where we do all things modern military gaming. Um, we'll be in touch later on in the week with some more content for you guys, so stay tuned for that. For now, this is uh, a risk and a gym saying, uh, signing off, returning to base with my one remaining F-16. <laughs> and uh, cool. All right, we'll talk to you guys later on in the week. Take care.